ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ So right now we have 33 participants in today's uh, Zoom class. I will now request Guru Maharaj to uh, start the class. Guru Maharaj. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, are you able to share your screen? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just trying a different configuration today so that in case anyone is unmuted I could mute them. Mm-hmm. just like like to announce just before we start uh, some bad <coughs> some very bad news unfortunate news that during the night we lost the presence of uh, dear devotee from thailand from bangkok his grace ram lakshman prabhu departed from the world he'd been suffering from cancer for some time so he left the body during the night So ask everyone maybe we can just begin by chanting the maha mantra for him Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Hare Ram Ram Hare 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 Thank you very much Kumar ji left the body in Thailand or in Mayapur No in Thailand in bangkok oh yeah so he'd been suffering for some time so krishna took him he did a lot of very, very valuable service there in thailand yeah. translating yeah. the bhagavad gita and krishna book printing them so it's a big loss for our thailand yatra okay So we'll begin with the class. Okay, so we're talking about uh, Lord Kapila. We were hearing how Devahuti... Has everyone got this? You can see my slide presentation? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So we were talking about Devahuti, how she had approached her son lord kapila to get guidance how to overcome this uh, unsteady mind and how to conquer over the attachment for the material energy her husband kadama muni had gone off and left her and so she was there though with her son she had a very wonderful son who is the incarnation of god lord kapila and so she's taking instruction from her son and we heard in the last class lord kapila was telling his mother that she has to become attached to us to a sadhu she has to develop the affection for a sadhu not to just be in the bodily concept of life and think only the family and the dog and the car but you have to develop a relationship with people who are dedicated to spiritual life so today we're going to speak about how to recognize a sadhu it's important you have to associate with a sadhu how do how do we recognize one maybe you remember last week we said that A sadhu is not someone just with a uh, saffron robes and a big beard. You have to be able to see the qualities, the actual qualities of the sadhu. So we're going to look at these qualities. Lord Kapila also told his mother what are the qualities of the sadhu. Uh, understanding the qualities 
that decorate a sadhu allows one to recognize him and make him an object of one's affection. And if we, if we know the, what the qualities are, then we can develop that relationship with him. So this is very important. Actually, the process of devotional service is described. There's a famous verse, and, there's, and there are different stages by which we're supposed to go through in cultivating devotional service are listed one after another. It's a very... It's a systematic process, right? In the beginning, there must be faith, shraddha. And ado shraddha tata sadhu sangha. So be, we begin with faith, and then the next thing is to take the association of devotees. But you have to be able to recognize who, are, who, are, who is the real devotee. And then make some relationship with them. So it's important for us to be able to recognize the devotee. So Kapila Muni therefore defines the characteristics by which a sadhu may be known. We're very fortunate Lord Kapila is giving us all the information we need. We have to make a relationship with sadhus, with devotees, what should be their characteristics? What kind of qualities should we look for? So Lord Kapila is giving us all this information. Oh. Okay. So here's, here's, a, here's the verse actually which is taken from Lord Kapila's teaching. This is all 25th chapter of the third canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And you can find this also in the book, The Teachings of Lord Kapila, which is a compilation of Srila Prabhupada's lectures on this chapter. Srila Prabhupada lectured almost on the entire chapter, and the, the lectures were later published in the book, Teachings of Lord Kapila. So this, this is the, the famous verse actually, well known by devotees. Two verses are shown here listing the different qualities of the sadhu. So we'll read it through. Symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful. The, he abides by the scriptures and all his characteristics are sublime. Such a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections, such as family relationships and friendly acquaintances within the world. So, we're going to look at these qualities now, one by one. We want to understand them. What happens? Okay. The qualities of a sadhu. First of all, he should be a devotee. That's of course, easy, it's obvious to understand. He must be a devotee. But we, we should understand also that just being a devotee is not enough. Being a devotee, that's, a, that's we expect to be, the, the whole, the, the, should be a devotee. But there are different levels of devotees. Right? We've given classes on this many times, how there's junior devotees, intermediate devotees, and topmost devotees, the different categories of faith, different categories of knowledge of the scriptures, like that. So different levels of devotee. But most of all, they must be a devotee. Devotee means they're, 
dedicate devotee of Krishna, of course. We're speaking about Krishna, we're not speaking about all the gods, but of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord and you should be devoted to Krishna. This is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means devotion to Krishna. So here's another quality, tolerant. It's an interesting illustration there. You can see Prahlad Maharaj, <laughs> his father was not very tolerant of his son being a devotee. So his father put him in the well with all the poison snakes. Prahlad is very tolerant. He saw Krishna in all the snakes. The snakes couldn't harm Prahlad because Prahlad is protected, is protected by Krishna, of course. Anyway, we have many examples of tolerance. Uh, very important quality. Lord Chaitanya taught we should be tolerant like a tree. Tolerate people may not uh, be very appreciative of us being devotees, of us chanting Hare Krishna. So many difficulties come. Srila Prabhupada himself described how in New York in the morning they would meet together and they would make a little program and as soon as he would pick up the cartels and begin to do some chanting and immediately the people upstairs would knock and sometimes he would call the police. And so we have to tolerate these kind of things. Not everybody is able to appreciate the importance of Krishna consciousness. Tolerate. We know in uh, Malaysia also sometimes the neighbors don't like that we have uh, big programs, we make a lot of noise, we disturb them, and they try to give us difficulties. We have to tolerate. Very important tolerance. One time uh, Srila Prabhupada was on a flight and devote some, yeah, of course he had some devotee with him. And so it happened that on that flight which they were on, there was a, some kind of a football or soccer team and they were, you know, quite rough people. And one of them had started smoking cigarettes. So the air stewardess, and you know, I think, I think that the Prabhupada pointed out, you know, that they shouldn't be smoking in the flight. So they complained to the air stewardess. And the air stewardess told them, put out the cigarettes, you can't smoke here. So he put out the cigarette, but then a few minutes later, then he lit up the cigarette again. So when he lit up the cigarette again, then Prabhupada's servant, he was quite a robust, passionate kind of person, so he got up and he was ready to go over to them and, you know, really get physical with them and tell them, you know, you can't do this. But Prabhupada restrained him and Prabhupada said, if we cannot tolerate, then what is the difference between us and them? So in this way Prabhupada was indicate, indicating how important it is for us to show the qualities of a devotee. And one of the qualities is that we have to be tolerant. We have to tolerate people smoking, and drinking, eating meat, all kinds of bad habits. Yeah, we know they're bad habits. We have to tolerate these things. And so it's important that we can impress people by our qualities. If we can show that quality of being tolerant, it's, it's very impressive. Okay, another quality. Oh. The thankless task. A devotee will take the thankless task of impressing 
upon others the importance of devotional service. Here in the picture you can see Narada Muni coming to instruct this hunter. So a thank, thankless task, Srila Prabhupada had written in the purport. Thankless task of trying to impress upon others, trying to convince others the importance of devotional service. Often, you know, we, we may give good instruction, but not everybody will appreciate. People will complain, why are you disturbing me? Why, why are you bothering me? The hunter was very angry at Narada Muni. Narada Muni had come there and chased away the animals. The hunter was upset. You, you ruined my hunting. I was going to crap. I was going to capture the animal. You chased him away. You let him, you, you scared him. And Narada Muni instructed the hunter that, well, this is very bad what you're doing, very sinful. But the hunter said, well, my father taught me to do like this. I'm just doing what my father taught me. And the same is there. In ordinary life, we see people eating meat and drinking alcohol and smoking. They say, well, I learned all of this from my father. At home we do this. He does this every day. So people are brought up in that kind of atmosphere. And it's difficult for them to understand the importance of devotional service. But devotee will continue to try. We have to make some attempt. That just like if we know the cure for some disease, we don't just keep the knowledge for ourselves. We want to share it. We want to give others benefit also. So it's important for us to also think about trying to distribute this knowledge, trying to share it with others, giving other people the chance. And we know not everybody will appreciate, but still we should try. It's important. While engaging in preaching work, he has to meet with so many opposing elements. So, yeah, we, to go out, to, to do preaching, just like Srila Prabhupada went to America, he went to America and there were so many challenges, so many things, which are all recorded for us in the the books glorifying Srila Prabhupada, books like Prabhupada Lila Amrita and other books, Mukunda Goswami has written very nice books, Shamsundar Prabhu has written very nicely. Every Many devotees who had intimate association with Prabhupada, they've recorded describing Prabhupada's preaching work and the different challenges and how the, 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 op the opposition which he had to overcome. Trying to organize programs for distributing Krishna consciousness meets so many challenges. We know in Singapore how difficult it is that the government, of course, they're not so inclined to, uh, for these kind of programs. And similarly also other countries in the world, some countries are openly atheistic and opposed to all kinds of religious practice. So when Prabhupada first met his spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had told him that you're a nice young man, Prabhupada had come with some young friends and he said, you're a nice young man, why don't you take up the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So at that time, Prabhupada had been a follower of Gandhi. And Gandhi was working for 
the independence of India. So Srila Prabhupada describes that he replied to Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati that, well, first we have to free our country, first we have to get independence for our country, and then we can take up Krishna consciousness, then we can spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati did not accept. He said, no. He said, the mission of Krishna consciousness is so important, it cannot wait for some political adjustment. And in this way he argued with our Srila Prabhupada and he defeated him and he told him that this mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should be taken up immediately. You can't just simply sit back and wait for times to change. So similarly, Prabhupada also, he'd, went, he'd gone to Russia uh, in 1971. At that time, Russia was still communist part, of, there was still the USSR, the communist regime, and the religion was not encouraged. But Prabhupada went there. He went there for a few days, and in a few days, somehow, by the arrangement of Krishna, they were able to meet a nice young man who took up Krishna consciousness very seriously. And practically on his own, he was able to organize the printing of books in Russian and also devotees of Krishna all over Russia. He traveled to places and he convinced people about the importance of spiritual life. And so opposition was there, certainly in Russia at that time. Krishna consciousness was not approved. In fact, they had said that there, there were three, three threats to the, the Russia, to the communist regime. One was rock and roll music, and one was Coca-Cola, and the other thing was Hare Krishna. So they were against Western materialism, and they considered Krishna consciousness also to be very bad for the Russian people. Mm. And even today there's opposition in Russia. It's not easy. So preaching work means you have to expect there will be opposition. Just like Lord Jesus Christ had so much opposition. He was crucified. So when, when the preaching work began in, in Australia, the devotees were often arrested and they were taken to the police station and then they had to go to court and sometimes even they were put in jail because Srila Prabhupada said, don't pay any fine, don't give them any money. And he said, if you, if you don't, it, this way you will get public sympathy. And so devotees did like that. They, they would be arrested and sometimes they would have to go and sit in the prison for one week before they got out. So, so much opposition. Prabhupada said, this is proof that this is a bona fide process. Because that's, it's bona fide processes which people will oppose, because they can see it's something genuine, and they oppose it. What they think is religion is actually not religion. And when genuine religion comes, they think this is not religion. That's how it is. So we have to be determined. Here's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Jagai and Madhai. Sometimes devotees are person, personally attacked with violence. We have to be tolerant. Uh, devotees used to distribute many books in the airports in USA in the 19, late 1970s and then in the 1980s the devotees had, well, they were allowed to distribute books inside the airports. So sometimes people, you know, American people can be very aggressive and passionate sometimes. 
So one devotee described how he was distributing books one day and he offered a book to someone and the man simply punched him in the face. You know, all he did was offer him a book, but the, the man re replied by punching him in the face. So the devotee, what did he do? You know, he was, he was not a weak devotee, he was quite powerfully built and he was quite capable of fighting back. But what did he do? The devotee, he, he, he simply thought, thank you, Krishna. He accepted the, the violence as the mercy of Krishna. He didn't become angry. He, didn't be, he simply tolerated and he said, thank you, Krishna. And so, devotee has to be, just like here, Lord Nityananda had been attacked, he'd been struck on the head and blood was coming out from his forehead. Lord Chaitanya was very angry and he, he's come, he's ready to bring the, the Sudarsan Chakra to kill Jagai and Madhai. But Lord Nityananda reminds Lord Chaitanya that in this Kali Yuga must be merciful. So even though we may be violently attacked, just like His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj was violently attacked one time. When he was in Spain, I think it was, some man came with a knife and stabbed him, and cut his throat a bit. Maharaj was in hospital, it was very serious. Maharaj tolerated all that and continues preaching despite these things. You know, devotees have to put up with this for the service of Krishna. It's for the service of Krishna. These things in the marketplace, 22 marketplaces and uh, Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. And so, so much difficulties undergo, a devotee may have to undergo just to be a devotee. But sadhu is always tolerant. Right? This is very important for us to keep this quality of tolerant and not to get, not to become like them. We have to show the difference. So, we can see how, 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 cha how cha such a challenge it is to, to distribute Krishna Consciousness, to preach Krishna Consciousness. Don't think people will appreciate you. <laughs> no, not at all. It's just like uh, Krishna told the gopis. Re remember Krishna told the gopis he was a debtor to them? because the, the gopis had sacrificed everything for Krishna. So Krishna told the gopis, I cannot repay you, that you've given me so much, I cannot repay what you've, got, what you've given me. So preaching Krishna consciousness is like that. It's like the mood of the gopis, that we have to give everything for Krishna, and Krishna cannot repay for what we give. But it's so satisfying to give everything for Krishna. Merciful, a very important aspect of devotional service, being merciful to others. We should not think who is qualified and who is not qualified. In, one, in some sense, we shouldn't think. You know, we do make some distinctions. For if people are openly atheistic and antagonistic, then we will tend to avoid them and neglect them. That is proper. But we should not discriminate against someone simply on the basis of their body, of their birth. Maybe on the basis of their qualities, we can dis distinguish who is qualified and who is not. But we shouldn't just put, put a person down 
because of his birth or because of his education. We, we should want to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere, wherever we get the opportunity. So being merciful is a very important aspect of Krishna consciousness. We're seeing a lot of mercy flowing during this lockdown period, devotees distributing prasadam in many areas, We're arranging to distribute prasadam, people, huh? many people, no jobs, no income, they're hungry, so we like to distribute prasadam. Prabhupada said, where there is no hoarding, there will be no scarcity. So we don't like to just hoard for us, keep for ourselves. We like to distribute. And the more we distribute, the more Krishna will provide, the more Krishna gives. The Panchatattva distributed Krishna consciousness. He plundered the storehouse of love of God and he distributed Krishna consciousness to everyone. And it is said, it is recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrita that there was no scarcity. The more they distributed, the more the supply increased hundreds of times. So we want to also be merciful and distribute. He is not only a well-wisher of human society, but a well-wisher of animal society as well. We can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Jarakanda forest, how he got the animals to chant and dance, and even ferocious beasts like tigers became gentle, and you can see they're embracing the deer. So this is possible by the blessings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, he is very powerful. But there are other cases, other great devotees, how they delivered different creatures. There was one uh, Rasikananda. Rasikananda was a disciple of Shamananda Prabhu. Shamananda Pandit was a great devotee, one of the and he, he had studied in Vrindavan from Jiva Goswami, and his first disciple was Rasikananda. And they preached in Arissa, what is now Arissa. That time it was Utkal. And so Rasikananda, he had disciples also. He had tigers and elephants and like that. They had all surrendered to him and become devotees. And they used to come and give service also. So, Prabhupada also told one devotee, there was a, a, an insect crawling on his table, and, and Prabhupada called the devotee over. He, he said, you see this insect? He said, oh Prabhupada, you want me to take it out of your room? He said, I want you to think how to give it Krishna consciousness. We have to give Krishna consciousness to all living entities. Haridas Thakur was asked, how to do that? Lord Chaitanya asked in Harinam Chintamani to Haridas Thakur, how can all living entities be delivered? Haridas Thakur said, the loud chanting of the holy name can deliver all living entities, even the trees and the creepers, plants, as well as the animals, they all benefit by the chanting of the holy name. So this is Krishna Consciousness, giving benefit everywhere. A sadhu is not satisfied with his own liberation. Prahlad Maharaj was asked by Lord Nasringadev, what benediction do you want, Prahlad? And Prahlad said, I, I don't need anything. I'm, I, I'm not a businessman that I worship you to get something. But Lord Nasringadev persisted and said, you, you should ask something, you should ask something. So then Prahlad Maharaj thought about his father and he requested Lord Nasringadev that my father was very demonic and committed many offenses and he fought with you, he even 
you know, he wanted to kill you. But he's been, of course, my father has been greatly purified just simply by seeing you and contacting you and you put him on your lap before you killed him. So Lord Nishingadev said, yes, you don't have to worry about your father. In fact, you don't have to worry about all your forefathers, but because you are such a nice devotee, they are all delivered. They are also liberated. So your father will never, he won't go to hell. Because you are his son, you are born in his family, so you have brought auspiciousness into the family. And all the forefathers, they are also delivered. So like that, the devotee doesn't think about his own self. This is uh, important for us, not to be selfish. We tend to only think about our own self, myself, my family, my people. But we want to be more liberal, not only liberate ourselves, like when we chant the holy name, silent chanting will liberate us. We're chanting, just if we're just chanting in our own mind, that may be good for us, but nobody will hear us. But the loud chanting of the holy name, if you chant loudly, it can deliver everyone who hears you. Sanatana Goswami tells how one brahmana was chanting his japa one day and a tiger was coming to kill him. Just before the tiger could kill the brahmana, a hunter came and killed the tiger. And the tiger was liberated because the tiger could hear the brahmana chanting the holy name. The tiger was killed hearing the holy name from the brahmana. <laughs> so, very nice liberating the tiger. Sadhus always think about the welfare of others. Prabhupada was very concerned like that. He didn't go to America just for his own benefit. He went to give Krishna consciousness to others. It's important for us to think about helping others. Of course, we, 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 our Krishna consciousness movement is not a material welfare society, not just something like Mother Teresa or something which, you know, you give food and help the needy. But Prabhupada encouraged us to give help to everyone whether the rich or poor. Some organizations, their focus is on the, the poor. But Prabhupada said, the rich, they also need Krishna consciousness. They also need prasadam. They need to hear about Krishna. And of course, we were just saying not only people, even animals. So, like a devotee should always be thinking concern for the welfare of others. And in order to contact others, we show here Sadhu travels all over the country from door to door preaching about Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya told Nityananda and Haridas, it's a famous verse in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Uh, Priti gari gari gira koro eshiksha, bolo krishna, bajo krishna, koro krishna shiksha. Bengali people all know this saying, this saying very well about Lord Chaitanya's instruction to Haridas that you go door to door, knock on every door and request them, bolo krishna, chant the name of krishna. Bajo Krishna, worship Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha, read the books about Krishna. So this is the thinking, this is the mission 
of the devotees. Srila Prabhupada got the instruction from his spiritual master. His spiritual master got it from his spiritual teachers, particularly his father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he got the instruction from the previous Acharyas. So Lord Chaitanya had also said, Lord Chaitanya had said, he predicted 500 years ago, uh, Pritivityachiyat Nagar Adigram Sarvatra Pracharhai Be Morana. Lord Chaitanya made the prediction that the holy name would be chanted Nagar Adigram, every town and village. So, how is it possible? It's possible when the devotee will go, go there and preach, go there and chant. We have to do the work. You have to go there and, and do something. So Srila Prabhupada went and he did a lot. And he sent his devotees also. When he recruited disciples, he would send them to go different places, and do preaching work, door to door. <laughs> Going every, we don't, we, don't, we don't know who we'll find. But there are many other religious organizations also doing this kind of work. You know, Krishna consciousness, devotees, we should also do it. We don't just sit in the temple and chant, but we like to go out to meet people. It's our duty to go out to give Krishna consciousness door to door. And knock on the door. Lord Nityananda was famous, knock on the door, and then he would fall at their feet. And Lord Nityananda was so tall, and this big tall person is falling at their feet and holding the feet of the person and begging them, my dear sir, please chant the holy name of Krishna. So like this, devotees trying to distribute Krishna consciousness, traveling everywhere, and Friend, friendly to everyone, making friends. We want to make friends, not enemies. We have to be careful. Sometimes <laughs> it's easy to make enemies. It's not so easy to make friends. We have to try to develop friendly relationships with people very important and if we expect people to appreciate Krishna consciousness then how we relate to people, how we get along with them will make a big difference. We want to develop nice friend, friendly atmosphere in dealing with people. People should not feel restricted or hostile towards us. So being friendly. Being friendly means we have to see Krishna in everyone. We have to see they are also part and parcel of Krishna. Just like Prabhupada is here you, in this illustration, Prabhupada with so many young people. Now one of Prabhupada's god brothers, he said, you know, he was also, he was a great devotee and he was a great scholar. And some of his, some people were saying, why didn't you go, why don't you go to the West and preach? But he said, oh, I would not like to preach to these kind of people. I wouldn't like to preach to these young people because they're young people. You can see some of them have got long hair and some of them are, you know, they're, they have bad habits. They're not so cultured. So he said, no, I don't like to preach to those kind of people. I like to preach to the more educated kind. I like to preach to professors and scholars. So there's not a lot of preaching. If you're just going to preach to scholars and professors all the time, you won't do much preaching. But Prabhupada's mood was, Lord Chaitanya's mood, to give Krishna consciousness everywhere. 
Lord Chaitanya went everywhere in India, around India, giving Krishna consciousness, giving the holy name, getting people to chant. So being friendly with everyone. Even they're from another sampradaya, just like Lord Chaitanya went to Sri Rangam, he stayed with the Sri Vaishnavas, he made friends with them. So like that, we have to also make friends with people. Next point, sadhu behaves with all conditioned souls for their ultimate relief from material entanglement. So the purpose of our being with these other people, the conditioned souls, of course we are also a little bit conditioned souls, we, wa we want to, we have to associate with them, We're, we want to help them to get free from this material world. This material entanglement means birth and death, birth and death. You take birth again in the material world, take another body, endlessly going on, coming back, another birth, again growing up, again getting old, disease and then death. So this is material entanglement and also then the material miseries miseries of the body and mind, miseries from other living entities, miseries of the material nature. We have to understand the uh, material world is not a place for shelter. It is not a very kind place. So we, people are often in distress and we can help them. We can save them from that distress by giving them Krishna consciousness getting them out from this material world. Therefore, no one can be more friendly than a sadhu in relieving the conditioned souls. Uh, being f friendly, uh, probably you can see in this picture, Prabhupada's got the attention of all the devotees He's telling some story. Hmm. Uh, and so Prabhupada was very expert in making friends with people. One time in, in, in London, when we purchased, well, when George Harrison purchased Bhaktivedanta Manor for us, so the devotees moved into the manor and there was one gardener who was employed to take care of the plants, because there's a lot of land there. So there was one man who was a gardener. And Prabhupada was going around and Prabhupada was, was, he met the gardener and Prabhupada began to speak with this gardener. The gardener was just some, you know, old English man and Prabhupada was speaking with him. And the man, somehow the topic came up, the man said he had he had false teeth. And he said, yeah, and the man said, I have false teeth because I like to eat sweets. And Prabhupada said, oh, really? He said, yeah. He said, I also like to eat sweets. He said, but I have all my own teeth. I don't have any false teeth. He said, he said, I eat milk sweets. He said, if you eat milk sweets, then won't damage your teeth. <laughs> like the Prabhupada could speak of all these things. Another time he met, with the, there was this uh, Grand Prix motor racing driver, his name was Graham Hill, and he came and he met Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was talking to him about driving racing cars, and how Graham Hill, of course he understood when you drive racing cars, sometimes you're very near to death. So Prabhupada could, you know, he was relating to him, Prabhupada was telling him about the time of death and the soul leaving the body. This way Prabhupada could, he, Prabhupada could get along with everyone, speak with everyone. And he's friendly with people. I would bring a life member to him. I remember one time in Calcutta I brought one life member and Prabhupada Pad sat with him and said, what's your business? Oh, you're doing this cloth business, oh, very nice. And 
well, you, you, how many children do you have? And the man said, well, I have two children, and Prabhupada said, very good. Like, the man was very happy because Prabhupada was very uh, friendly with him, he was relating with him. Not that immediately preaching, but gradually he would preach to people. First, making a little contact, social contact, a little relationship with them, and gradually give them Krishna consciousness. A sadhu has no enemies. Now somebody may think we're their enemy, but devotees don't think they are our enemy. There was an incident in Mumbai when Prabhupada purchased the land at Juhu. So there was one man, he, he was the original owner of the land which we had purchased in Juhu. So the man had the intention to take money from Prabhupada and not give the land. He was trying to cheat Prabhupada. And the man was very powerful, he had a lot of contacts in the government and in the police and the municipality. And then this, the man was trying to cheat the devotees and Prabhupada from the land. He was selling the land, taking the money and then keeping the land. And so the man was thinking the devotees are his enemy. But Prabhupada said, we don't think of, of him as our enemy. Of course, at the same time, we have to get the land. But we don't think of him as our enemy. We understand he is also part and parcel of Krishna, spirit, soul. So, <laughs> like this, Prabhupada is encouraging the devotee, don't have, you know, have bitter feelings towards people. But be friendly with people. Even people are not very nice to us. They're not dealing with us very properly. But be, be open with people and be prepared to accept people. They may have some nasty way of dealing with us, but don't think of them as enemies. All right? Just understand somehow due to their karma they're dealing like this. Or somehow, maybe it's our karma, they're dealing with us like this, and we just accept it. But be willing to keep a friendly relationship, make some contact with them, even though people may be cold and bitter. Sadhu has no enemies. <laughs> you can see Prahlad Maharaj, <laughs> the enemies. Uh, and of course his father had arranged all of these people to try to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad never thought of his father as his enemy. Prahlad is think, was thinking how to, how to help his father to become Krishna conscious. And even after Lord Nasringadeva has killed his father, Prahlad Maharaj is asking Lord Nasringadeva, please don't let my father go to hell. So devotee, very careful how we think of others. We should always think compassionately to others, even though people may be quite uh, unfair, nasty, but we will accept all the difficulties. Peaceful, that's important. Keep the mind peaceful. Haridas Thakur, even in that situation with the young woman trying to entice him. Haridas Thakur said, yes, just wait, I'm just chanting after I finish my chanting. And the result was, gradually that woman became a devotee. So be peaceful. Do our chanting, have faith in Krishna, peaceful. Grandfather Bhishma, also peaceful, on his bed of arrows, leaving the world. Grandfather Bhishma for so many days to give instruction to Maharaj Yudhisthira to teach him how to rule and to help him to accept everything which had happened. So that is real peacefulness, that even in such a disturbing situation, you are able to be Krishna conscious and to give that knowledge, to share that knowledge with others. 
abide by the scriptures. Very important. We have to know the scriptures, to follow them. We have to read them. We have to develop some relationship with the scriptures. Very important for us. Hearing regularly, studying the scriptures and following what's in the scriptures. One who actually follows the principles of scriptures must be a devotee of God. Yeah. We're actually devotees. We have to follow everything. We can't just simply preach, say one thing and do another. So we have to follow. All the Shastras instruct us to obey the orders of the Personality of Godhead. So we have to know what, what are the orders, what are we supposed, how are we supposed to be, what are we supposed to do. Everything is given to us. We just have to follow, just have to take the instructions. Krishna has spoken. So all the characters of the sadhu are sublime. They should, the qualities of the devotee will be pleasing. The Goswamis are described, Dira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakaro, that they were loved both by the gentle and by the envious. The sadhus are like that. Everyone appreciates them. And a sadhu always engages staunch devotional service without deviation. Hmm? keeps himself always occupied in devotional activities. Very important. Renunciation, detached. Lord Chaitanya, leaving home. Not that everybody has to take sannyas, but the, we, have to re, we have to see everything in relation to Krishna. That is actual renunciation. Utilizing everything in the service of Krishna. Not that we have to give up everything, but we have to use everything carefully in the service of Krishna. Renounce everything, our own comforts and family connection to serve Krishna. Very nice. Family connections keep us in material life. Sometimes you have to give them up. If they're a barrier to Krishna consciousness, then we give them up. If they're no barrier, then you don't need to give up family life. You can stay in family life, provided they're, the family are cooperative. A sannyasi generally in the renounced order of life. Yeah. So Prabhupada, you renounce, one, one can be renounced. Prabhupada said, those devotees who are working, it's written in Bhagavad Gita purport, Devotees working in their office, who utilize their hard wealth for the service of Krishna, he said, they are all Goswamis. They are all in the renounced order of life because they're dedicating everything to Krishna. Renunciation will be successful when his energy is employed in the service of the Lord with great austerity. Hmm? Is that right? Using our energy for Krishna. Devotee develops all the good qualities of the demigods just simply by doing devotional service. But those who are not devotees, even though academically qualified, no good qualification or good characteristics, because they're still under the modes of nature. The one who is the, actually the devotee he has transcended the material nature. But if one is not a devotee, then he's under the modes of nature. Sometimes he's in goodness, sometimes passion, sometimes ignorance. Okay, so we're finished here. Are there any questions, anybody? Yes, Maharaj, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, a sadhu is a devotee of the Lord. Lord Shiva is also known as the greatest devotee of the Lord. So the so-called sadhu, who is a devotee of the Lord Shiva, can he be recognized as a sadhu, Pradeep? 
Well, the problem is the so-called sadhu is a devotee of Lord Shiva is thinking Lord Shiva is the Supreme. He's thinking that Lord Shiva is the Supreme God, he, that he's the highest. He's thinking Lord Shiva is the, the controller of everything. He's not understanding Lord Shiva's position. Lord Shiva is a devotee, but the sadhu who worships Lord Shiva, he doesn't think Lord Shiva is a devotee. He thinks Shiva is God. And often people who worship Lord Shiva, they have the desire to get either to get some, something material or they want to merge. To, they, get, they want to get this uh, sayuja mukti or merging into the oneness, the Brahman, give up their individuality. So uh, it's not very common that people who are devotees of Shiva are actually devotees in the real sense. because. The Lord, Lord Shiva, he is a devotee, he's chanting the, the holy name of the Lord. Now they're chanting, whose name are they chanting? If they're chanting Lord Shiva's name, that's not the same. Lord Shiva, he chants the name of Lord Ram. But if somebody else is chanting, people often, I met one person, he said he chants Lord Shiva's name, he chants Namo Shivaya, but he said, in the future, when I become more advanced, I will chant Aham Shivaya. Their thinking is to become Shiva. And they're thinking, what is Shiva? Who is Shiva? What is it? Ultimately, Shiva means light. That's how they understand Lord Shiva. They're thinking Shiva is not a person, but he's ultimately light. They're thinking ultimately everything is just light, just energy. So they don't understand the personality, they're often impersonalists. So this is a problem. Can Thank you. you. Yeah, okay, Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, uh, Ramananda Raya Prabhu has got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Prabhuji, please unmute yourself. Prakshat Gurudev, thank you for the class. How can one be tolerant without being taken advantage of? Because tolerance is one of the important qualities. Well, when we speak about being tolerant, it doesn't mean we let people just take advantage of us. Yes, we have to understand tolerant means yeah, people may not deal with us. Just like I was describing how Prabhupada was purchasing land in Juhu and the man was you know, trying to cheat Prabhupada. So Prabhupada dealt with the man very nicely, but at the same time Prabhupada wanted the land. He didn't let the man cheat him, but, it is, but he didn't get you know, he didn't, he didn't lose his temper, Prabhupada didn't lose his temper, he didn't uh, show anger or anything, he kept calm and he just dealt with the man so that we got the land. They just, you know, they did everything. Pro so you, in the same way, people may try to exploit you, you have to protect what is actually yours. Don't let people just simply take advantage, unfair advantage or improper advantage over you. So being tolerant mean, just, it doesn't mean that we let people push us around or take, take whatever belongs to us, take it away from us. No, we have to protect what is given to us, what we're using for the service of Krishna. At the same time, you know, we're tolerant in general. On behalf of, we have to protect Krishna's property. We have to protect what we're using in the service of Krishna. So that, that's not being intolerant. But, you know, somebody at the same time, you know, they may be, they may be angry, they may be abusing us and calling us names and so on. Okay, we tolerate that. Mm. It's challenging also, Maharaj. But anyway, I have another question. Um, Sadhus myself, the heart, uh, I always engage in the highest level of philanthropic activities written in the uh, verse. How is it related to charity work? Philanthropy and charities quite correlated. Well, sadhus do the highest charity when they give spiritual knowledge. 
spiritual knowledge that's more valuable than any kind of other charity. You may give some money or you give some food or something to people or some cloth. It's material. It gives some temporary benefit. But the sadhu, if he gives some spiritual knowledge, if he can enlighten people, that's the highest charity, the highest benefit. So sadhu's business is to, he's, he's performing the highest welfare work by awakening them to Self-Realization. Sukadeva Goswami, it said Sukadeva Goswami would come to the homes of the householders to beg some milk, but he wouldn't just only beg milk, he would give also some blessing, he would give some enlightenment, he would speak some spiritual knowledge. That is real charity. We give the holy name, performing sankirtan, that is also a charitable activity. We are chanting for our benefit, but also to give the name to others. People who hear the holy name, they benefit. Where there's loud chanting, people can hear the chanting of the holy name. It's, it's very beneficial to people, purifies them to hear the holy name of the Lord. So this, you, this is charity. Guru Maharaj, uh, Dwarakadesh Prabhu has got a question for you. Prabhuji, would you like to unmute yourself and post your question please? Guru Maharaj, if one is selective in preaching, is it an offence? No, no it's not an I, I said that we do have to have some discrimination when it comes to preaching because if we try to give knowledge to people who are openly atheistic and very offensive, then the, it will simply increase their offensiveness. It won't do them any good. It will just simply increase their demonic nature. So the best way we can benefit these people is by neglecting them. And so we do have to be discriminating in preaching. And generally we want to give knowledge or preaching to the innocent people, people who are innocent, who are willing to hear. But if you see somebody who is really antagonistic and very challenging and very offensive, then better just to avoid them. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. please carry on. Thank you very much. Okay. But so, Guru Maharaj, we have uh, around 45 uh, participants in this morning's class. So, we have uh, Joyce, we have um, Satya Mataji, Srinivas Prabhu, Dwarkadesh Prabhu, Ramanan Rai Prabhu, Sudarshan Prabhu, Brajahari Prabhu, Rupa Raghunath Prabhu, Rajalila Mataji, Linda Mataji, Gopinath, Saroj. Purnima Mataji, Radhika Mataji, Sindhi Mataji, Surya Nandini Mataji, Danavir Prabhu, Ramesh Prabhu, Rajji Mataji, Sonia Mataji, Sachi Dulal, we have Malti Mataji, Praveen, uh, Valerie Mataji, Shiva Prabhu, Renuka, Priyalata, wow, Dali, my goodness. we have Madan Mohan, Madan Mohan Prabhu, our temple president in Singapore, uh, Raj Prabhu, Yogita Mataji, Kiana Malini, Sunena Mataji, Mauli Mataji, Komadaki, Mahindra Prabhu, Sudhir Prabhu, Deepa, and Hui Hui. Wow. Any other questions? <laughs> Anyone would like to check? Uh, there is one question from Sudarshan Prabhu's side. Okay, Sudarshan Prabhu. Okay. And uh, one minute, one minute. Not there, not there. Just a minute. Um, so, uh, Karuna Mataji is also here with Rajalila. Okay. So, Rasha Prabhu, I'm going to unmute you now. Okay, speak. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dandavat Pranams. Do we necessarily have to be um, nice and friendly to everyone? Do we, ne do we have to be nice and friendly to everyone? Yes, you don't want to be nasty to, to people, you want to be friendly. 
I said sometimes some people we will neglect them. We may not pay attention to them or we may keep a distance from them. But in general, we want to be nice and friendly with people. We want to keep nice relationships with others. You don't want enemies. So how to avoid and how to avoid making enemies? Make friends. Try to make friendly relationships with people. And so if we are nice and friendly ourselves, that can attract other people. People see that you are very kind and have a nice nature, friendly. They will like it. But if they see that you're always nasty and angry and irritable, oh, you want to keep away from that kind of person. Some people are always very fierce, <laughs> very frightening. You, you keep a distance from them. So yeah, we do want to be gentle and friendly. It's nice. It's important. So? Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj we also have uh, two more questions. Uh, and by the way, Deepa Mataji is also here from Singapore. Um, so her question is, Guru Maharaj, any incident being in the association of Srila Prabhupada which, you know, endorsed or encouraged you um, extensively? So she wanted to know a little bit about your association with Srila Prabhupada and any incidents which really encouraged you um, extensively. Well, I remember one time Prabhupada was going to come to London and devotee in London had come from America and he decided that our temple was not suitable for Prabhupada to stay there and he wrote to Prabhupada that I will stay in uh, he wrote to Prabhupada that you, we will get hotel room for you Prabhupada because the temple is not very big not very nice but Prabhupada wrote back to him and said no no I, I want to stay in the temple I don't want to stay in hotel so I thought that was very nice. I was very encouraged. Okay. So that's one example. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, one more question that just came in from Sudhir. So, Guru Maharaj, I hear everyone who follows different demigods within Hinduism, um, you know, for example, Lord Shiva, Ganesha, etc., and other religions enthusiastically praise their own perception of God. It seems to be exclusive most of the time, but in Krishna consciousness, I, 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 but is Krishna consciousness considered all-encompassing? Well, we do accept the, we do accept the Vedic path that there are many demigods. We offer our respects to the demigods, to these other gods. We we are not offensive to them, we don't deny them, we offer our respect to them because they're performing important service on behalf of the Supreme Lord. But the point is to understand that these other different gods are not supreme, that they're working under the direction of the Supreme Controller. So it's important to understand their position in relation to the Supreme Lord. And it's, it's not that it's all one. People often misunderstand and they think, oh, it's all one, they're all the one, they're all the God. And ultimately, there's no God. If everyone is God, then there's no meaning to God anymore. And so we have to understand the actual position of the demigods in relation to the Supreme. So these demigods are given some uh, authority over the material nature on behalf of the Supreme Lord. Just like in a government, there are many government departments. You know, you have the land office, the tax office, the police office, you have so many offices in the government. So similarly, the Supreme Lord overseeing the universal affairs. You have the God of the wind, the God of rain, the God of sun, the God of wealth, the God of, uh, you know, so many different gods are there. How many? 33 crores? So, we have to understand these gods are all like ministers, but ultimately there's one supreme. 
And that one Supreme Lord is over everyone. And these other gods are all agents on his behalf, working under his direction. So we offer our respects to these other gods, but at the same time we know they're not supreme. We worship the Supreme Lord and we cultivate devotion for the, out for the Supreme Lord, one over everyone. Is that okay? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We also have uh, Sachi Dulal Prabhu from Australia on the call. Um, I think maybe his sister is also on the call. Uh, Prabhu, uh, Guru Maharaj, there's another question from Malini Shanti Mataji. Um, Malini Mataji, can you please unmute yourself and post your question? Hare Krishna Guru Varash, my humble obeisances to you. Hare Krishna. Uh, Varash, you said that uh, by chanting loudly, we can deliver others, and that's when we are doing the Harinam on the streets and all that. And we also do our chanting and all that. But uh, Krishna says, uh, one in a million only comes to me. So how do we connect this? Uh, uh, is it by chanting we can go back to Krishna or? We have to wait for that one million, to be in one million. No, well, what, what does Bhagavad Gita say? It said, uh, out of th thousands among men, one is endeavouring for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. And so Krishna is describing the situation of the material world. That there's the very few people who even think about self-realisation. And of those who do think about self-realisation, very few of them are perfect. But Krishna consciousness, as we said, is very charitable. We're giving the holy name to everyone. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is a Mahavananaya avatar, the most merciful, because he's giving Krishna consciousness to everyone without distinction. So we want to continue that mercy. There are so many living entities. There's no scarcity of living entities, an infinite number of living entities. How many are we giving Krishna consciousness to? Look at Malaysia. You've got so many trees and plantations there. Is anybody chanting the holy name there? <laughs> There's so many tribal areas there, so many places, so many living entities everywhere. How many do we give Krishna conscious? How many get the opportunity to hear the holy name? It's very rare, very few. And of those who hear the holy name, how many take advantage? How many are taking it up? It's also rare. So we have to do our work, we have to continue on behalf of Lord Chaitanya to chant the holy name and preach. You, some people, some rare souls are there, they be, gradually become Krishna conscious. We can see our devotees are not very many. There's so many other souls. How many are devotees? We're not so many. So we have so much work to do to deliver the world. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, uh, Dwarkadish Prabhu has another question on the departure of Ram Lakshman Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji, would you like to... No, no more questions. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, just uh, again, uh, <laughs> again, just after losing my another good brother, now we end up end up losing Ram Lakshman Prabhu. Great devotee, he did a lot of things for Radhyatras in Bangkok and everything. When he actually left Guru Maharaj? Last, yesterday? Yeah, uh... I spoke to him, I spoke to him the day before yesterday, he had just come back from the hospital and uh, the doctor had told, you know, his cancer was in the final stages, the doctor had oh, said, he had cancer. yeah, doc, he, had, uh, he had an operation about a year or more ago, um, prostate cancer was there and they had removed part of the bladder or something. So uh, he'd had some problem with the prostrate, you know, he couldn't control his urine and like that. So uh, 
then he'd, he'd gone to the hospital with the swelling and they saw the swelling in the legs. The doctor said, this is it's the final stages of the cancer. And the doctor told, he said, maybe a couple of months he would depart, but just took a couple of days. Yeah, I, I tried to speak to him just the day before yesterday. He was not able to speak very much. Even he was sitting, he was sitting, but it, he, he, Purnamasi told me that when he speaks, he gets very tired very quickly in a minute or two. All of the organs in the body had all broken down, and oh, and then uh, then part, something happened uh, night before last. After I spoke to him that night, something happened and everything started bleeding. So they took him to a hospital and he left in, in the night. I think it's, it's good, you know, he departed quickly, didn't want to suffer anymore. Very difficult. So they're having the cremation today in Bangkok. Good evening, okay. Uh, can I have uh, Purnamasi Mataji's uh, phone number, Guru Maharaj, in WhatsApp? I can send some message to her. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you. Uh, I'll send you. At least I send my my uh, Smriti Sabha also later. Okay. I feel very sad that losing losing him because great devotee he has done a lot of work for Thailand. And yeah, he did a lot for Thailand. Yeah, he was he was originally he joined Krishna consciousness in America. In Chicago, yeah. in Chicago, and he, you know, he, he came back to Thailand to help to establish Krishna consciousness in Thailand. So when I used to go, you know, he was the one to, you know, he'd find, find a place for me to stay, where I could stay, because we had no center or nothing, so he would arrange some place where I could stay. Yeah. And, and yeah. We stayed together with him in uh, the next house. Together with Guru Maharaj that day. Yeah. One time Guru Maharaj was going for an operation, you know. Yeah, right. So, that, when I had my hernia yeah. that time. Yeah. 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 They, they moved. Very sorry to hear. Okay. Yeah, we're all sorry. Yeah, we're all we're all in line. We're all going. <laughs> yeah. 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 But how how old is Guru Maharaj? What is his age? I don't know exactly, but yeah, 60s or... It seems to be around 60s or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, yeah, devotees? Karana Mataji? No? Okay, so okay. very nice. Thank you very much, Guru Thank Maharaj. Thank you for Swami Guru Maharaj. Ki oh, oh, today is the auspicious day for the uh, Shiradahi Festival, Raghunath at uh, Pan, Panihati. Panihati, yeah. Panihati Shiradahi Festival. So we're having a small program here in Mayapur Temple. It's all in this Jai Pataka Swami had asked that we should of prasadam distribution, so all the co all the community, usually community, they're not coming to temple, but they've arranged today, they could all come today and and they all have to wear a mask and keep distance, but they're, they're going to give out prasadam to everyone. Okay, Guru Maharaj. So, Thank you Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.